Hi guys, T here. Time for part 5 of how to craft your D&D &D campaign. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite part of crafting any campaign, the treasure. So, I think as far as loot and treasure goes in any tabletop game, it can be divided into three categories. That is, uh, looting the bodies, looting the chest or room, and looting the dragon's hoard. Now, it is important when you start a campaign, especially, is that a lot of players forget that uh, that they can loot the bodies. Whenever they kill something, chances are there could be something valuable on their enemy's person somewhere, whether it just be picking up their sword or their helmet or rifling through their bags or whatever it happens to be. Remind your players, you know, one time that hey, you can stop and loot the bodies if you want to. And sometimes parties don't want to. They think it's dishonorable to steal from the dead, or they just don't think that person would have anything good on them, or that they couldn't get anything off a certain monster, etc., etc. But the smallest category of finding treasure in D&D &D or most tabletop games is looting the bodies. So anytime something is killed or defeated, it can drop something that's contextually correct. So, you know... A bandit could drop several coin purses worth of money, you know, crude weapons, leathers, things that you would more than likely find on a person like that. If he's been robbing people for the past fortnight, he's, he might have five different bags of money on him, more uh, raw coin than the average creature or other thing you fight would have, because that's what he does. He takes money from people by force and then runs off. The next step up, I suppose, would be the soldier or the warrior category. Uh, the people that have magic weapons, chain mail, you know, potions, um, low to mid-range magic items, you know, their boots could be magic, their, their helmet, their spear, whatever it happens to be, or they could be carrying an unusual number of potions or just like the step up from the mundane but not quite into monsters and other high-end things now monsters and animals sometimes dm struggle with those because there's not as much loot you know there's there's no reason for uh, a random animal to carry 145 gold and a magic fire ring you know that doesn't make any sense but you know fur fangs uh, feathers you know if you have a skinner or a tanner there's plenty to be done there there's meat depending on what you've killed, etc., etc. Um, not that you'd want to eat every monster you came across, but you know the, the natural valuables that could come off of an animal's body are certainly up for grabs if you have the means of harvesting it. So that's always something to think about. Now, the next tier up as far as loot goes is looting the chest or looting the room now whether you're in a dungeon or a, a castle or at a bandits camp or a cave or whatever it happens to be you know the treasure chest is the the universal symbol of hey there's loot here there's something good it's up to you to make sure that's interesting even if it's just with you know copper coins rope and other mundane things you know, is the chest locked? Is it trapped? Is it fastened to the floor? Is it heavy? Is it made of wood or metal or stone? There's charts in several D&D &D books you can look up to show how much quote-unquote treasure should be in a treasure chest depending on what level the party is, but you can use your own judgment. If if you notice your three sessions in and nobody has a magic ring, well, now's the time to drop, you know, 1d4 magic rings, and you can decide what those are going to be beforehand. Or, you know, you notice nobody has a magic weapon, nobody is carrying potions around. Find out what they don't have and try to give it to them. If they, if they say for three or four sessions, gosh, I hope we come across a magic axe somewhere or a magic mace, you know, find them a mace that glows in the dark and does double damage to undead creatures, whatever it happens to be, you know, embellish them a little bit and make sure it's varied. Make sure you've, it's kind of like the name list that I mentioned before. Pick like 20 things to drop throughout the campaign and just drop them at random and they'll add them to their arsenal and they'll be grateful. Try not to be stingy with magic items but don't like overload them either. You have to dr 
strike that that very careful balance between over gearing your heroes and not giving them enough to let them take care of themselves so potions are a thing you know bars of precious metal are a thing uh, scrolls for extra spells you know magic weapons pick like three or four things if you've got a party of four and try to make sure if it's not money it's at the very least useful or something that they haven't run across yet like smoke sticks are always interesting or never moving rods or anything that it may not be valuable and they may not be able to use it in combat but it would still be it would still come across as very useful to them so really 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 look into what kind of loot that you would want to find what kind of loot would make sense here you know there's a there's a jade dragon statue here that's super cool we can sell this for a bunch of gold but you know down here there's also three potions of healing or a scroll of magic missile that's nice all those are nice things um, vary it up so that everybody in the party gets something whether it's intended for each individual party member or you let them decide um, you know the scrolls might go to your magic user so you may not want to find particular things that obviously go to each party member but look for interesting things that you would want to find if you opened a treasure chest in the middle of a dungeon crawl and you'll find your players would be happier for it now the third and final tier of uh, treasure I think is the most important because there are very good ways to do this and there are very bad ways to do this and it's called looting the dragon's horde now I say dragon but I mean like dragon necromancer general you know the big bad that you're you've killed and now all his stuff is yours it could be any number of things in general anything with a lair or with valuables or a castle where you know you've killed all the minions you've sold all the trash now you've killed the boss and now you get all of his shit that's what looting the horde is it's a a large outpouring of treasure now let's let's just use a dragon as an example say your party has slain the dragon and they've you know gathered up its horde for themselves the way to not do a horde is to say oh you find gold and gems and other valuables and they total up to you know a hundred and thirty two thousand gold and some copper pieces and you know your players may be happy with such a high number hundred and thirty two thousand gold but you know they'll stuff it in their bags and they'll go okay what's next and you don't give them any time to relish that moment a, a dragon's horde is a big deal or a necromancer's workshop is a big deal they're gonna find lots of magic items you need to do this is the one place where I think grocery listing is a good idea where you can just get a piece of paper and put put 50 things on it even if like you put money down six times you know here's 50 platinum pieces here's 5,832 gold here's a bunch of silver here's 10,000 copper coins and that could take up five of your slots and that's just the raw money you also might want you know statues paintings weapons armor furniture jewels metal bars deeds to land contracts and other documents books there's tons and tons and tons of things that you can put into a hoard and just cover the page cover the whole page with stuff that they find some of it might be valuable some of it might be junk you could find five sets of common clothing sitting in a chest somewhere they might just throw that away but it fills in part of the room and as soon as you like unroll that scroll of this is all the stuff you find or you, you get that printed page that's got 50 lines on it and you've covered it with everything you know here's here's a pair of daggers here's a a mace that glows in the dark and does double damage to undead here's a sword that bursts into fire when the user is angry you know there's tons and tons and tons of things and a horde should always be very varied very exciting very full of all kinds of valuable and interesting things you know here's a here's a clock that tells the time and the phase of the moon and the time of year you know it's worth 200 gold but somebody might want to keep it because that's kind of cool sounding you know 
they should be, you know, pawing through that horde for 10 or 15 minutes, marveling at all the cool shit that they just earned. It's This is not a, a you know, you find this much gold worth of treasure. Moving on, never do that. Never, ever do that. They should be excited. They should be jumping around, swimming through all the gold coins and throwing it up in the air and, you know, throwing chests open and, you know, look at this. Look, I found a jeweled chalice. Oh, my God, there's a painting of a naked woman in the corner. You know, there's a statue of a cherub. He's got diamonds for eyes. There should be... This should be a serious, like, celebratory moment. They've just destroyed this great evil, and they've got all this wealth all to themselves, and you have to let them enjoy it and let them flail around and be, you know, happy for themselves for this great accomplishment and all that they have just earned. Looting the Horde is, is should be like the climax of a great adventure, and if there's stuff afterward, which there should be, because you should give them a chance to spend all this money and treasure... Um, they need to always look back at that as one of their grand achievements. So looting the Horde should be a big planned event where they can look through all kinds of stuff and, like I said, th have have throwing gold coins at each other fights and things like that. So really embellish the Horde. Really let them look through it all and you know, throw in statues and, and, like I said, armor, furniture, jewels, etc. Throw a little bit of everything in there. Money, money should be the least interesting thing in a hoard, even if there's tons of it. There could be a hundred thousand gold in there. That should be the last thing they look at because they've got 49 other things on that list that you made of cool shit and they can't wait to see what all of it is because treasure is, you know, pretty much the number one thing that players look forward to when they're playing D&D. And you got to keep that in mind when you're filling your chests, when you're putting coin purses on your bandits, when you're filling the dragon's horde with interesting stuff. Make it cool. Make it interesting. Embellish them. Show them that every time they turn the corner, if they win, if they don't get stabbed in the back or burnt to a crisp, they're going to get some cool stuff and they need to know that every step of the way. So really pay attention when you're laying out your treasure. And that's all I have to say for this time around, so I'll see you guys for our final part of How to Craft a D&D Campaign. Keep gaming.